Why settle for a regular mug when you can make a statement? The Heavy Mug is for fitness enthusiasts who don't take life too seriously while still pushing the limits. Let it serve as a daily reminder of your commitment to physical excellence. The first batch of their durable Heavy Mugs includes special engraving, allowing owners to impart wisdom on the importance of physical health alongside intellectual growth. Designed to last generations, to pass a message to the future. Its adjustable weights and barbell grip are sure to turn heads and spark conversations, whether you're at home, at the office, or working out. Equipped with additional barrels, it transforms into a robust wrist-supportive kettlebell. The limited edition pre-sale launch allows you to secure the heavy mug at an introductory price. The Rocks Company designs innovative health and fitness products, focusing on quality and durability to support and inspire your wellness journey. Visit heavymug.fit. That's heavymug.fit to get early access and embrace the lighter side of fitness. Again, head on over to heavymug.fit. This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. The one that everybody wants, me. Says I just whipped your ass. This is my iron. You're going to acknowledge me. All right, everybody. Welcome to the WWE Podcast Mailbag. It is Wednesday, February 21st, 2024. We're going to see how many of these emails we can get through tonight as uh, we tend to break these into two parts with all the volume we've been getting lately. But I'd like to welcome a few new patrons, those of you who have joined us on the free trial side of things. Trevor R. And I know there's another one here. Oh, Adam. Adam Penrose. Welcome to both of you. Hopefully you enjoy us enough to stay. And if you want to join Adam and Trevor, head on over to patreon.com slash WWE podcast to get everything ad free and exclusive shows if you go up in tier. But uh, you also get priority support on this show or priority placement rather on this show because with all the emails we get, it's not a bad time to be a patron because it nearly guarantees that you'll be in the first part of the mailbag. So let's get into it. Let's start with those patrons as always. And the first patron is, let's start with Kyle, New York Kyle. It's been a while. He says, let's get to the Elimination Chamber predictions. First off, I think Damian Priest and Finn Balor will retain the Undisputed Tag titles against Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate. Next, I think Rhea will retain the women's championship against Nia. Grayson Waller effect. Reigns and The Rock will interrupt and attack Cody and Seth. Uh, Drew is winning the men's elimination chamber. And Becky is winning the women's elimination chamber. <clears throat> and uh, after the match, Rhea and Becky have a stare down to close the show. And that's it. So Kyle and everyone else that's going to provide predictions it's hard for me to comment because then it would give away all of my predictions. But suffice it to say, Kyle, I think you're on the right track with a lot of these. A lot of these, I, I will say, there are some PLEs that you feel very confident about. There are other PLEs that you don't. This is one of those PLEs that you feel very confident about, which should make us uncomfortable because... Triple H has a habit of not being super predictable all the time. And I think that this could be one of those events that while every, nearly every match seems like there's a heavy, heavy favorite, there could be a surprise or two. And I don't mean The Rock and Roman Reigns, which is very possible they show up. But I do mean that there could be a surprise winner or loser in the matches that you have... Uh, have predicted there, Kyle. So thank you. All right. Let's talk to Sharon from Israel. He says, hello, Matt, and hello to all of you trailer park trash people. Well, that's not nice, Sharon. I think you're only spe uh, specifically speaking to the Cody crybabies. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> first of all, the mess is last week. You say that uh, I'm not a friend of Shahar because she's an in. Oh, boy, this is going to get rough. <clears throat> she's an inbred cry. Cody crybaby. I'm going to do a heel turn on her. Don't tell her that. Okay, well, your, your secret is safe with me. I'm not going to tell anybody. 
you can pretty much bet on that. It's just between you and I. Since no one listens to the show, you can guarantee it's just between you and I, Sharon. I wanted to remind you that we had stories when Brian Kendrick killed Vince McMahon, when his limousine blast uh, blew up, and when Shawn Michaels did a match against God. So I'm 100% sure that the Vince allegations are a work. <clears throat> um, except the problem with that is, Sharon, that uh, all of those were actually online stories, you know? they were trying to build to something. This is something they want nothing to do with on air. But if this turns out to be a work with Vince, let me just say, well, I don't believe that. But if it is, I think WWE is going to catch hell for it. Because especially in today's day and age, if they're trying to make up a sexual assault allegation, why would you want to make, out of all the things to make up, in a PG product, Not we're not in TV 14 land, why would they want to make up that? Things that are actually real life traumas for a lot of people. And it's it's just bad for business all the way around if it's a work. I don't think it is. Anyway, you want to say that the rock the heel turn for the rock, you think he's gonna stay heel because it made it's made in order to have Roman be a baby face, and that's the best version of him I love so much. Oh, and can you s- smell no, 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 no. Sing along with the rock is over. Let's have a good chamber in the weekend. Yes. <laughs> I, my voice, I'm, I'm talking a little lower still tonight. My voice is still on the mend. So I want to be able to last for the, the duration of the show. But uh, the Roman rock dynamic is very fascinating when they eventually get there. This is obviously about Cody and Roman. And when Cody and Roman are done and Cody eventually beats Roman, rock will step up to Roman which we all believe will build to WrestleMania 41. I still believe though, the best dynamic they can have is a baby face rock against the heel Roman. That's what we all wanted. That's why there was such a, uh, an outcry at at times for the rock to come back and face Roman as a, as a baby face against the heel Roman, a heel Roman that catapulted his career into, I mean, not just superstardom, but arguably in the, in the Mount Rushmore for some people, for some people, you know, you can make an argument. <clears throat> He's a hall of famer right now. I mean, Roman Reigns turning heel was the best version and the best thing that ever happened to him. So thanks, Sharon. Let's talk. Uh, let's see here. Um, and we got more patrons here. I'm going to check out the Patreon website and see who's next. We have Frank. Frank says, Patreon or Patreon Frank or Patron Frank, first off, wants to thank the, the WWE podcast for letting me come on the show and do the SmackDown review. Second, I feel Randy should face The Rock at WrestleMania 40 in place of Triple H. Third, why did they bring back Raquel Rodriguez before five days before Elimination Chamber, knowing she was not going to win? And finally, the bloodline are, are irrelevant again because of The Rock. I've noticed that the bloodline were washed up for a while until they brought Dwayne Dra- uh, The Rock Johnson. That's all for now. Till next time with everybody saying WWE Podcast. Yeah. Okay. Well, Randy Orton facing The Rock. I mean, let's go. Yeah. It's kind of weird that Randy Orton has been pushed so far back in our minds. I mean, Randy Orton has been pushed back in our minds for all the other things going on. That's how deep things are right now, guys. That's how appreciative we need to be that a Randy Orton return was quickly forgotten because, of course, CM Punk, which, yes, it did step on his return. Randy Orton recently said it didn't. It did. Of course, CM Punk's return stepped on uh, Randy Orton's. Of course it did. Uh, It overshadowed it, at the very least. But Randy Orton facing The Rock, yes, because I want Rock in a match. And Randy Orton and The Rock, uh, to my recollection, have they ever had a one-on-one? I know that they had a tag team match at WrestleMania 20 with Batista or Evolution against The Rock and Sock Connection. But have The Rock and Randy had a one-on-one? It sounds like they have, but I can't think of too many specifics. So that would be one. They could could say first time ever. I would, I would think that's a lot of fun. As far as Raquel Rodriguez, 
five days before Elimination Chamber. Look, we all know Raquel has no chance. And, you know, she recently put out a video of all of her. She's got some kind of uh, skin disease or I, I got to look at the actual disorder. It, it's pretty brutal. Um, you know, she's got some answers apparently, but still mending. And the reason they brought her back, not to have her win, of course. It's called star power. Making the match feel as big as possible. That's the reason. And, um, yeah. So, thank you, Frank. All right, let's talk to the next patron. This is Zepp. He says, and I can't do this with my voice right now. <laughs> you say, Ayo, Zepp here. How's it going? Hopefully great, because I'm hyped out of the stratosphere for the incoming Elimination Chamber, which, by the way, is at 12 p.m. here. Finally, a PLE at a reasonable hour for us Europeans. Well, that's not fair. It's 5 a.m. here. I mean, we are spoiled. We are spoiled brats over here in the United States. So we kick and scream and whine whenever we don't have a PLE at like 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So now we under we get a little small, small, small dose of what the, the European uh, WWE fans have been feeling for decades. All right. I've stopped by just to thank you for inspiring me to work on my own wrestling podcast with a friend. Well, that's awesome. I was inspired as well. Um, actually by, if people are wondering, I actually was inspired by uh, a couple of uh, podcasts. One of them was Wade Keller and his PW Torch. I think they do a great job over there. And Jason Powell over at Pro Wrestling Net, both of them. I mean, they are, they're, they're just so knowledgeable and insightful. Um, so they inspired me as well as actually a, um, uh, Yankees podcast. If you guys listen to Michael K, I, I love his show as well. So anyway, I'm glad I, not that I'm anywhere near that caliber, but I, I'm glad I could, uh, inspire you to work on a, a show with your friend. It, it, it is fun, but I will just say, <laughs> do it for love. Don't do it for money right away. People think you're just going to make a whole bunch of money. And it, it, if you're in it for money, you're going to quit very quickly. I'll just leave it there. Okay, back on track. Am I the only one that was hoping to see Jay beat Gunther? The match was so good. Too bad Jimmy interrupted, but I can see a path or see the path we're in for for WrestleMania. Also, yeah, Becky is getting kind of boring. I still love her so much, and Rhea versus Becky is a match made in heaven for me. But she needs a revamp on her character or she will fall in the, quote, great but boring category. That would be a shame. Okay, I'm out. Have a great day, evening, morning. Thank you for doing a great job and have fun on the way to the chamber. All right, Zeb. Well, thank you. And I mean, you're echoing my sentiments as far as Jay beating Gunther. I, I, was, I was hoping for it in the sense that it would push Gunther into the chamber and maybe he'll win the chamber. And then you'll get uh, Gunther versus Seth for WrestleMania, but they don't have that on the card, clearly. It looks like Gunther's going into WrestleMania as Intercontinental Champion. And that's fine, too. So really, there's no bad option here, but they prioritize Jimmy and Jay, and that's the story we're getting. Right now, I'm not too inspired by it, but again, I'm open to change. As far as <clears throat> Becky and being boring, yeah, you know, it's weird to say someone's great but boring, but both of those can be true. You know, right now, Becky feels very uninspired. I don't know if uninspired is the word stale. I've said this before. She just is kind of doing the same things every time she comes out, or at least from a promo standpoint, or um, she's trying to change things up visually, but that's not enough. She needs a, at her core, some kind of change. And I don't know if that's a heel turn and I'm not going to sit here and pretend I know the answer. I don't, but we do know <clears throat> that something does need to change. There's just no two ways about it. Um, I mean, you can keep her on this track. If you don't change her fine, but the fans will make the change for you and they will turn on Becky. Um, eventually they will, but thanks. Thanks so much, Jeff. All right, let's talk to, I think you're familiar with this guy, Mr. Uh, Alex, the French guy, our European champion. 
And he says, your European champion has been drafted to the Monday Night Raw tier. Alex, the French guy, has to be on the number one show. This is WrestleMania season, so get your championship opportunity and get beaten up. Outside of that, I have to say that the Jey Uso-Gunther match has been disappointing. They have no chemistry. The writers of this match also did a poor booking. Jay hits five spears, which in and of itself should be a finish. One splash, and 15 seconds later, Gunther gets up. The finish was also poor, um, as the knee of Gunther failed to connect to Jay. I hope Jimmy and Jay work better together. Also, about the 22, uh, 2K24 ratings, Jay Uso is a 90. Drew McIntyre is an 89. What? Logan Paul's a 90? Yeah. Alex... Listen, I mean, they, they locked in these ratings a while ago. They, I mean, <coughs> excuse me, Drew McIntyre only recently has elevated himself. And, you know, so that, that that's excusable. But, I mean, Logan Paul also, how many matches has Logan Paul won? A lot. Almost every one he's been in. So it's kind of deserving, you know. I mean, he went toe-to-toe with Roman Reigns and nearly beat Roman Reigns. So it's whether we love it or hate it, it's deserving. But to your point about Jay hitting this five the five spears, that was one of my criticisms of the match. I didn't um, dislike it as much as you did. I actually thought that they had a, some decent chemistry, given they haven't really worked in front of a live crowd in a while, or maybe ever in this capacity. I don't think they have. So I'll I would say it was fine, but the five spears is inexcusable. That, that that to me, and then, then yeah, Gunther gets up. It's just one of those things. You have to take your mind out of reality. But, all right. Thanks, Alex. Let's talk to, uh, what's, uh, oh, Arturo. And Arturo says, I'm listening to the mailbag and seeing what The Rock said on SmackDown and, and making it impossible for Cody Cody will lose yet again at WrestleMania and Roman will go on to break Hogan's number. If we think about it, Cody losing makes sense. He would continue his hard time story and the internet will break with all the Cody eating chicken nuggets, crybabies going over the top with it. WWE would be shot even to an even higher level with more media exposure, more eyes on the product and more money in the bank leading to Cody winning money in the bank. Cause why not? He calls a shot at survivor series and finally beats Roman. Well, the the thing is, Arturo, how much longer can they go to well with this this strategy? Like, how much longer can they continue to have Cody struggle before the fans kind of give up on the character? There will come a point, and I think we're close to that point. The fans can feel this one, which is why they booted The Rock out of the main event, because they believe in Cody, and they believe that this is finally his time. For him to lose two WrestleMania main events in a row, that's hard to get up from. I know that you could tell the story to get him back and, and have him win at Survivor Series, but this is, a, this is made for a WrestleMania win, especially with the Roman Reigns streak ending. That is deserving of a WrestleMania stage, not Survivor Series, where really Survivor Series now is about war games. So... Also, Cody winning Money in the Bank. The Money in the Bank prize is made for heels. You, you've had baby faces win in the past, but it's been overwhelmingly heels who have won that briefcase because it's designed for a heel to win. Think about why. Because it's, it gets cashed in at the most opportune time when the champion's at their weakest moment. And they can be easily defeated. You're not going to have a baby face do that. Especially the caliber of Cody Rhodes that they have built up and had. I mean, how many matches has Cody Rhodes lost? Count on one hand. Maybe only on a few fingers over the last two years. So I don't think they'd have him do that because it, it would really sour the meaning of the of uh, of the the victory for Cody. And in how he won, you want him to straight outright beat Roman one-on-one, no excuses, no outside interference, nobody taking advantage of a situation when the champion's down. 
that's how you have Cody win this. There are moments to do that, though, Arturo. I understand with the Money in the Bank briefcase, but it's generally made for a heel. So thank you. Let's continue. And let's talk to uh, Mitchell, another patron of the show. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, I'm trying here. Um, and Mitchell says, thought it was really a good Raw overall this week. Very excited for Chamber here in Australia and to be able to watch a PLE live in prime time. I hope the crowd is good. Sometimes our sports crowds can be a bit reversed compared to some of the other rowdy overseas crowds. If nothing else, Rhea will get a huge pop, I'm sure. Oh, Rhea is going to get an otherworldly pop. I mean, I can't wait to hear how the crowd reacts to her. My frustration this week is with the two bloodline interferences in the opening and closing matches on Raw. I liked the throwback to the WrestleMania 39 finish in the Cody Drew match, but in saying that, how many times can we have the same finish? At what point did the GMs or even Triple H intervene to put a stop to them interfering? And it's becoming unrealistic. Maybe they're building to that, but I just wanted to get that off my chest as it's getting old. Keep up the good week, work. Keep keep up the good work and have a good week, Mitch. All right, Mitch. I mean, <laughs> we've been uh, excuse me, we've been seeing this, we've been seeing this finish for like a, a couple of years now. This this is not a you know obviously a new phenomenon, and it has gotten re- to the point of ridiculousness. Not just because it's repetitive and predictable; th- those are bad enough. And they're bad enough to, you know, find a way to not do that finish. But it, but also, like you said, how have the GMs or even the opponents of Roman Reigns not come forward to management and said, hey, uh, if you've been watching any of Roman's matches or any of the Bloodline matches, even over the last, like, you know, year, there's a very high likelihood of one of them interfering to to cost uh, them the match. So can you maybe ban them from ringside? You know, it's, it's really amazing that no one has come forward because they lean on this finish over and over and over. And it is getting extremely frustrating and it takes the fun out of the matches because you already know what's going to happen. Not exactly of how or who you just know generally Bloodline interference, spear, one, two, three. It's it's getting egregious. You know, I'm with you. Now, I know why they do the finish, I understand. But it makes all their opponents look stupid. Because that'd be the first thing I'd do. If I challenge Roman Reigns and he accepted right now, the first thing I'd do, go to Nick Aldis and say, hey, bruh. Uh, have you seen any of the bloodline matches? Like just even one of them? Yeah. Well, um, then you know that interference happens a hundred percent of the time. So can you do something about that? Ban them from ringside perhaps? No, it, it, it is, it is, uh, yes. Frustrating. And I'll leave it at that. Thanks, Mitch. All right. Let's talk to Charlie and, uh, Charlie from Milwaukee. And Charlie says, uh, my chamber predictions are like this. Judgment Day retains the tag titles to eventually lose them at Mania to R-Truth and Little Jimmy. Randy Orton wins the men's chamber by pinning Drew McIntyre. Wow, okay, okay. Logan Paul does something to LA Knight to set up a U.S. title match at WrestleMania. Bianca Belair wins the women's chamber by pinning Becky and giving us the match against Rhea that people actually want to see. Ooh. Mm -hmm Mm-hmm-hmm. You know, Charlie, that Rhea and Bianca seem to me more f- like a much better matchup than Becky. I understand that Becky has been building to Rhea, even though we're overlooking Nia, right? And they Rhea and Becky went face to face at the press conference in Vegas a couple weeks ago. And so they've been building to it before the match is even official. <laughs> but match wise and making it feel fresh, Bianca is the correct choice. Now, what does that leave Becky to do at WrestleMania? I don't know. Maybe face uh, Jade Cargill. You know, there's things for her to do. I don't need to see immediately Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair. Bianca Belair and Rhea Ripley could be a hell of a match. 
I like that pick a lot. Number five, Grayson Waller effect will set up a tag team match with Seth and Cody against Roman and The Rock. And number six, Rhea retains. Looking forward to hopefully doing a SmackDown review on March 24th. Hashtag we want rock. Hashtag Cody crybabies. All right, Charlie. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's um, get to another patron, uh, an NXT Plus patron. This is Kaiser. And Kaiser says, hey, Matt, hope all is well. Just a quick correction. My name is pronounced like laser, but with a K. Oh, oh, not Kaiser. So Kaiser. There we go. Thank you. Kaiser. All right. That uh, that mistake gets made plenty of times. Yeah, I, I would have never known. You know, I, I think of Kaiser. I'm thinking of Ludwig Kaiser. So that kind of is not helpful, right? I already have a wrestling name in my mind. But Kaiser, perfect. All right. Anyway, I realize I made a mistake in my last email. I meant to say, what would your thoughts be on Triple H unveiling Orton as an opponent to take on The Rock? And what are your thoughts on that? And if you don't think that's an option, who do you see Orton? What do you see him doing at WrestleMania? <laughs> I mean, I guess you could throw Orton in some kind of U.S. title mix. But to me, that's a demotion for Randy Orton. I mean, I'm sorry it is. I think The Rock and Randy Orton is a great WrestleMania match. I love it. It's one that I don't believe, I don't believe we've seen before. And both are absolute professionals. Randy Orton looks like he's still 24 years old as far as in-ring ability. This on paper and really an execution is nearly a home run. I mean, it's hard to screw this up. So, but that's what we thought with Rock and Roman and look what happened. So I, I love that. You know, I have Randy, I have Triple H say that, you know, if it wasn't for my pacemaker, I'd be planting your face in the middle of this ring and saying one, two, three, but I've got a formidable substitute. And Randy Orton with the history of Triple H makes sense. I love this. Also, assuming the Judgment Day dropped the tag titles of WrestleMania, and if Priest wins the World Heavyweight Championship sooner or later... Where do you see Finn do, going with this? Do you see him as a title contender or do you think he may move down the card? Do you think his couple of matches versus Seth last year for the title was his last shot at that level for a while? Thanks so much, Kayser. Well, <laughs> I don't think right now, right now, I mean, until WrestleMania, there are any big plans for Finn Balor who has been kind of hidden in the Judgment Day. I think post-WrestleMania, you could easily have Finn Balor defect from the Judgment Day and even face, um, turn babyface, maybe become the demon again and face Damian Priest for the World Heavyweight Championship if he wins it. I mean, Finn Balor is just too good to be hidden in this group. Now, he's getting good camera time. He's in a lot of tag team matches. But Finn is still at his best as a singles guy. So I think... They'll they'll reignite Finn Balor post WrestleMania, and maybe defect from the Judgment Day. I don't see Judgment Day disbanding. They're too much of a cornerstone or a foundation piece of Monday Night Raw, but I do see Finn Balor being reintroduced into the minds of fans. Who I mean, most fans aren't even talking about Finn Balor, and it's kind of crazy. So, thanks, buddy. All right, so let's go to. Okay, let's go to Freeman, <laughs> um, another patron. He says, it's been an interesting week with Jade Cargill being removed from the Elimination Chamber and a hasty battle royal being put together. I think this tips the hands of who's going to win. Rhea's latest interview on Raw gave her vulnerabilities and came across as if they want her to be the face. If we assume this is a full character turn and not just for her one match, then her opponent would need to be someone that is a heel or could turn heel. They likely had Jade Cargill to win but didn't want to turn her heel. And putting anyone against Rhea is going to do that right now. Rodriguez won't win as she was a last-minute replacement proven by the leaks of the original lineup. And Naomi and Becky, or Bianca, are firmly in the face role, meaning the winner will be Morgan, Lynch, or Stratton. I don't think Becky will turn heel after the negative feedback for the last one. And out of Morgan and Stratton, Stratton has a lot more to gain. 
I would like to think they are going to use this to give Stratton a huge push. Mania already has Rhea for star power, and honestly, I believe Stratton and Rhea would blow the roof off. WWE have shown they want to push Stratton, and there is no better way to do this. At least that's what I want to believe. Smart Money is still on Becky to win, but I think that's the more disappointing ending. Well, yeah, there's no I will say there's no chance of Stratton winning. And the reason is not because she doesn't have the ability to have a good match with Rhea. It's WrestleMania. And it's time for stars to be stars. I understand you're trying to build stars and help build younger talent, but Tiffany Stratton, I mean, if you asked fans, you polled fans, what match would you rather see, Becky and Rhea or Stratton and Rhea? It would be a massive landslide. I mean, like 90 plus percent that would want to see Becky Rhea because it's name brand value, you know? And you know what Becky's capable of. Some people don't even know who Tiffany Stratton still is. You know, like you can't do that match at WrestleMania because she's so new to the main roster. You can build her throughout the year and do a WrestleMania 41 match. Sure. Way too soon. Just because I think fans would be like, huh? You're doing this at WrestleMania? Most would. So. You want to also pick my brain on Naomi's entrance music. This worries me as a fan quite a lot. I know that WWE have farmed out all the music to Def Rebel for a while, and despite what a lot of people say, I think they can produce some amazing songs. However, they definitely have a signature style, and as for the genre, OST tracks appear to have a rock music bent. As Naomi's old theme was made by CFO, It's likely WWE changed it to be able to keep the rights to the song and not have to pay royalties. But when making Naomi's track, I think they showed the weakness in Def Rebel as a music production company and that they have no experience with EDM and I don't feel comfortable outside of rock. Uh, Her new song sounds like what a corporation thinks EDM should sound like here as her old song sounded like an actual EDM song. The only other EDM entrance which I'm guessing EDM stands for, and this is embarrassing, Electro electronic dance music, I think that's what it stands for, uh, is Carter and Chance that's currently on the roster. Their entrance, I would say, is better, but it is missing the dirt and feel that an EDM needs, making it sound heavily corporate. From what I've read, reception to the change is negative, and I feel like this is just going to push them to make them more tracks in their comfort zone, making a more a more homogenized landscape of music and not branch out into new styles and genres is needed. Do you think the WWE needs to branch out in the musical styles or am I overthinking things? Okay. Well, Freeman, (laughs) I don't think I will say you are the most in depth email I've gotten by far about this topic. Most people I've actually heard either nothing or positive when it comes to Naomi's uh, change. I actually think it was needed. You know, it's not that her entrance was, was, bad before and I had no, you know, no particular issue with it. Um, but I think it her character was in need of a, a bit of a new coat of paint upon her return and changing her music up did that. I like the N A O M A wait N A O M I if I can spell it correctly, uh, her name being spelled out when she comes out, that's different. I know that it made to you and others who are, uh, EDM experts may not, uh, it may not sound like a true EDM song, right? To the trained ear, it doesn't, but that's maybe not their goal. You know, like the entrance music is effective and we've seen it help get talent over, especially with Cody Rhodes. It's an iconic song now, but it's not the end all be all. You know, it's important, but I've, I mean, Really, what you do in the ring is also equally important. And, and on the microphone, I would argue, is even more important. Um, but do they need to branch out in the musical styles? I mean, depends on the character. You know, it, it depends on the characters that they are putting out there. You know, if they're if they're just trying to branch out to branch out, but it doesn't match with the character that they're trying to introduce to fans, then no. Um. Yeah. Th- then no, it, it really all depends on what they're trying to do with the person and character that they are presenting and creating. I mean, v- variety is always fun. Variety is generally a good thing. 
you know, so you have a little bit of something for everyone. But I wouldn't do it just to do it. And I honestly, I really don't have an issue with that. I mean, I'm, I wasn't sitting there going, oh man, this doesn't sound like a real EDM song. I, I don't think to most fans, most fans probably don't care about that. Not that you again, you're much more knowledgeable than a lot of people or um, have a, a deeper interest in this than most people. And that's not a bad thing. But I, I'm just pointing out, I think the general consensus among fans is that they wouldn't give a damn if it's, uh, you know, if it was not sounding like an authentic EDM song, you know, as long as it's just a good song, then I don't think fans care. Right. This isn't a, uh, this isn't a concert, you know, this is, this is just wrestling. And if the entrance is fun, I don't care how it happens. And honestly, if WWE is also saving themselves from paying royalties, cool. Yeah. Like I, good for them. I, I would try to save money there too. That, that can be very expensive, but thanks Freeman. Always thinking about different stuff. It's not a bad thing. All right. Let's get to, uh, another patron here, David. And David says, Hey Matt, hope you and everyone listening are having a good week. Currently listening to your raw review. I'm glad you brought up who will face Gunther at, for the intercontinental title at mania. What if Sami Zayn takes the title off Gunther? With how his character has been built as a man who is down and out without direction, wouldn't that be the perfect underdog story for Sammy since he seems lost and is on a losing streak? It would kind of remind you of the Rocky times with the bad guy being a huge, mean, foreign, and foreign, and I think that would be fitting for WrestleMania 40 in Philly. Well, I've got news for you. Sammy is also uh, foreign. So, I mean, Canada is not the United States, but I totally understand what you mean. Um, also something I read solo Sokoa is Owen 23 since defeating John Cena at crown jewel. I'm not sure if it's including house shows or dark matches, but man talk about a waste of putting somebody over a little less than a month, uh, a little less than one month. I get to attend raw in March and I'm looking forward to buying tickets for another raw in May for my girlfriend because she really wants to see Rhea Ripley. Anyway, hope you all have a great week. Thanks for reading. Okay, David. As far as Sami Zayn goes, I think that's an excellent choice. Sami Zayn's a great choice, a great uh, second um, second in line for me to 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 win the belt from Gunther. You know, from I mean, to me it would have been Jey Uso, but they're not going that road for WrestleMania for Jay. They're obviously going with Jay versus Jimmy. But with Sami, Sami, yeah, he's he's been kind of lost, right? He's been lost. He's been directionless. He's been kind of down and defeated. I think Sammy's a great candidate to beat Gunther. Believable, too. I know he's on a losing streak, but we know what he's capable of. We know exactly what he's He nearly beat Roman Reigns a year ago in the elimin- Elimination Chamber. Um, but your, your stat about Solo Sokoa, I'll take it at face value. That obviously would have to include house shows. I mean, because we haven't seen Solo in 23 matches since he uh, beat John Cena, you know. <laughs> um, so that is, if it's true, that's embarrassing. And that's exactly, like, I understand John Cena would, you know, he's he's a selfless uh, in-ring uh, performer, wrestler. He is. He's selfless especially at this stage of his career, he knows what his role is. He knows that he's back just to, you know, put over, put over uh, existing talent. He's in the give back part of his career and that's uh, admirable. But if you're going to have the current talent outright beat a legend like John Cena, and you're not going to follow up on that victory and you're not going to make the most of that victory, then what the hell are you doing? The loss obviously doesn't help John, but if the perceived benefit for the winner is there and you don't capitalize on it, then no one wins. And the loss to John Cena was for nothing. I mean, look what Austin Theory's done since then. Nothing. So yeah, those two uh, losses John Cena took, who really came away the loser? (laughs) You know, pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. All right. Thanks. Uh, Thanks, Dave. All right. 
What other uh, patrons we got here? I know we got a couple more, and then we'll wrap it up for now. We got DJ Kuzmo. Let's see what he's got to say. He says he's back at it again. Another month, another PLE, another PLE mailbag, and another acknowledgement. I miss Mr. and Mrs. Casual Wrestling fan. I hope all is well, and we get to hear both for WrestleMania. A, I can only do so much. I, I miss them hosting this show as well. They were a joy to listen to. A lot of fun. I mean, I'll, I can reach out again. Um, you know, if you're listening, Mr. and Mrs., we all miss you. And I hope you, we hope you're doing well because there's a lot of fans that uh, you connect with. And, you know, maybe we can uh, find a way to get you back. So trust me, DJ, I'm with you. I'm with you. We're in the same boat. Anyway, with that being said, and only four matches on the card, let's get to the all-important Kuzmo Elimination Chamber predictions and potential spoilers. The Judgment Day versus the new Catch Republic Undisputed Tag Titles. I'm predicting, sadly, the Judgment Day retains. Even though Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate would make this competitive match. Second, the Women's Elimination Chamber match. First, I'm going to say this match might open the show, similar to last year's from Montreal. But after much thought, I'm predicting that Becky Lynch wins and main events against Rhea. There's a slight possibility Raquel turns on Liv, since there's some past history when they were teaming. But that had teases of Raquel and Liv at odds against each other. Bianca's an odds in an odd spot in this match because she doesn't have anything ongoing in a feud outside of maybe damage control, but it seems like that ship has sailed. Lastly, I'm going to say to my Dark Horse pick, winner is Tiffany Stratton. She's been on a roll the last, uh, with two straight wins, and she's in a similar spot that Austin Theory was in last year as the unlikely person to win the chamber that actually won. Three. Rhea versus Nia for the Women's Championship, Women's World Championship. It would be cool if this match was the main event since Rhea is from Australia and her hometown of um, Adelaide, Adali, I don't know. Sure, whatever that hometown is for Rhea. No idea how to pronounce it. It's approximately 28 hours from Perth. Obviously, there's going to be cheers for Rhea throughout the match, and I don't see Nia winning this, even though to me she's been really impressive for several weeks. So that being said, Rhea gets the win and retains. And finally, the men's elimination chamber match. It's kind of odd that there's five from SmackDown competing in this match to get an opportunity to face the world champion from Raw. Interesting too is that Damian Priest still has not cashed in the briefcase. So could it be that Priest gets involved in this match as the seventh entrant? What about Sammy being the seventh? Insane and wild possibilities here in the match. However, I'm predicting Drew gets the win and finally gets the all-important WrestleMania main event moment or semi-main event moment in front of a full crowd for the world title. My dark horse pick to win is Randy. I know it's odd, but it seems like him versus Roman one-on-one is on pause until probably after WrestleMania. But it would be cool for a visual of Seth versus Randy at WrestleMania or a triple threat of Drew, Randy, and Seth since there would be no punk at the, uh, WrestleMania this year. And don't forget about Priest with the briefcase. Anyway, before I go on longer, DJ Kuzma signing off. Enjoy Chamber. Have a great weekend. Well, <laughs> you know, um, I, I apologize for all the coughing, guys. I, I'm hanging on. Hanging on by a thread. Um, you know, that is an interesting point that Randy could be in part of the title match. That's a very real possibility that it could be a triple threat for the world title. Very real. Very, very real. One that I've not considered as I have just apparently in my mind made it uh, Randy versus The Rock. The most interesting point, though, that you made was that there's five guys from SmackDown and only one guy from Raw competing for a title. By the way, that's on Raw. Um, And Drew is that one guy from Raw, which to me heavily suggests he's going to win this because I don't think they want anyone transferring from SmackDown to Raw right now. So, great stuff, DJ. I appreciate it. Okay, let's... <laughs> excuse me. Let's go to um, one more here. And uh, I believe the rest will save for uh, another time. Maybe I'll, what I'll do on Friday, because Friday is going to be the uh, preview and prediction show, my preview and prediction show for Elimination Chamber, what I may do is 
combine the preview and predictions with a mailbag part two. That's my goal. So look out for that on Friday. So just if you if you didn't get your email read, then I'll get to it on Friday. And if you um, didn't get a voicemail read or heard, obviously I didn't do any voicemail. So I'll get to all those on Friday as well. Okay. All right, Badfish, what do you got to close us out? You're saying, hey, WWE fam, just sharing my thoughts on the chamber. So your, your predictions are and that the Judgment Day wins because they need to face awesome truth at Mania and give our truth a championship. He's so over with the crowd right now. I think the chamber matches are going to be used to start programs. That being said, in the women's chamber, I don't honestly know because the possible winner is between three people, Becky, Bianca, and Raquel. That being said, I'm still going with Becky. Tiffany's there to start a program with someone, and I believe that program could start between Liv and Raquel with what with one of them finally turning heel. Um, this isn't in the email, but also Jade Cargill, guys. What about Jade? Could she not come out and attack someone after this or face off against someone? They gotta get can they can't ignore Jade in WrestleMania. I'm not saying she should be implanted into a women's championship match. Absolutely not. But how do you not have Jade make a big impact here? I'll just say that. Okay. For the men's chamber, Drew wins and they start a program with Logan and LA Knight for Mania. Also, Rhea retains. No other way to book that. Hope everyone enjoys the show. Enjoys the show. Yeah, thank you. thanks, Badfish. Yeah, really, is there any other way to book it? I mean, just imagine imagine if Rhea loses oh my god they would never do it but the crowd support for Rhea is going to be off the charts all right (coughs) excuse me I'll do one more because I do see one um, straggler one patron that I didn't get to here and that's Efren Noah and Marshall the four horse guys this is quick so Efren Noah and Marshall say hello good sir so with Jay losing to Gunther, thanks to Jimmy, that sets up, sets up their match at WrestleMania. With that being said, who do you have challenging Gunther for the title at WrestleMania? My boys and I are leaning towards Sami Zayn. Last week, he said that he will become a world champion, and then this week on Raw, he said that he'll be a champion and then left the world out. Gunther already pretty be- much beat everyone else except for Sami. Maybe we're reading too much into it. What do you think? I mean, Efren, look, you, I think you guys hit it on the head. I mean, Sammy's going to play the underdog from the underground type of uh, character. I mean, he's on a, he's, he's kind of the lovable loser right now. He's on a, he's on a, a cold streak when it comes to winning matches. We haven't gotten that match yet. Jay lost and he's out of the intercontinental title picture. He's going to be facing his brother at WrestleMania. So really there's no contenders left on raw anyway. And I'm not going to pretend anyone's coming over from SmackDown, okay? So I would agree. Sami Zayn is a perfect candidate. And you know what? Not just the perfect candidate for a really good match with Gunther, but a perfect candidate to really beat Gunther that no one, I think, would be angry about. Sami has been in the background for too long. You know, um, he's been in the background for the with the Intercontinental Championship, or um, just in a title picture for for too long ever since he and Kevin lost the tag titles he's been kind of you know floundering trying to find a direction and I think this could absolutely set him right back on the right uh right path so you guys uh, the four horse guys hope you're all doing well all right I will pause there um I do uh, let's see. I do have uh, other. Uh, I do see other patrons. Good grief! I'm so bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> Seth, I do see you, Seth. I don't want to. Um, I want my voice back before I answer your email, Seth. I do see you. You're a new patron. I appreciate that. So thank you, Seth. S e f f. If anyone's wondering how it's spelled, um, but I want to be able to give you a better answer than the half asked voice I have right now. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait till Friday. I'm going to start with uh Seth, I believe, and then I'll uh, answer everyone else's emails. We'll get to voicemails and the predictions officially come 
on Friday. So I'll leave it there. Uh, again, I want to thank everyone for, for sending in those emails, especially the, obviously all the patrons who uh, dominated the show. But you can get your email read right up front too at patreon.com slash WWE podcast or go to Apple and uh, find yourself a seven day free trial there as well. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll be back in uh, a couple days with your mailbag part two and the official preview and prediction show for Elimination Chamber. Take care. Talk to you next time. Thanks for listening to the WWE podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad free, head over to patreon.com slash WWE podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.